Good afternoon. That's a bunch of violets. I believe that's 37 or 38 violets. Um, that's probably about half of them. And then I've got about 10 strips and um, a bunch of violet containers that have violet babies in them that all need to be sprayed also. Um, I'm not having issues in my garden, but that's why I'm spraying. I want to keep it that way. Um, with, a, with a collection like this size, if I had six plants and, and bugs got infested in them, it wouldn't be that big a deal to correct, to correct that or deal with six plants. It'd be bad enough that I have to deal with six plants, but if having 60 or 75 plants plus babies and others, and then I have other house plants also, I don't want something to even get started or get out of hand. <clears throat> This time of year, it's real easy for something like that to, to happen too, especially this time of year. You're bringing plants in from outside. Um, everything's dying outside, so they're looking for some way to get inside and get onto your stuff. Um, they're going to hitchhike. They're going to come in on clothing, on dogs, on pets, on shoes, through an open window, through ventilation systems. A lot of them just float and ride the air currents and can come in all the way through a house and land on a plant or find something. Um, it's just a matter of time before something did find these. <clears throat> I treated these the first time when I first got these back in um, first of June and middle of May or end of May something like that I first treated these with the neem on a show and um, it's done great it's protected them all the way up till now I want to try something different and I've been I tried this on a handful of plants um, I guess I started in the summertime started using this on my orchids but I tried this on a handful of um, violets about a, I don't know, maybe six weeks ago and they had no ill effects and are doing beautiful um, they're going to get back into the program today but they're blooming, they're healthy, no bugs, no issues. I'm not having bugs, I'm not having issues, but that's why I'm spraying. i got to keep it from getting started. If an outbreak was to start in a collection of this size, I'd, it, would be, oh, oops, it would be overwhelming. Very overwhelming. There'd be no way to get it stopped. Um, and um, it's a lot of work. Um, I enjoy the violets. They're a challenge. Um, and I got too many of them. I got, I'm way out of hand, I know. I got way too many of them. But um, it's hard to just have one. You know, it's really odd. It's really hard to, they're addictive. But um, the granddaughters love them. Um, and they're learning to grow. And um, there's a lot of people that are benefiting from the leaves and from everything, from the babies, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not a bad thing. Um, the bear product, the great thing about the bear product is it's, it, it'll kill on contact and keep killing with on contact for 24 hours. Um, but it also has a systemic property. Spraying it into the soil and around the bottom of the plant and spraying it real good will, uh, I'm going to spray the top of the plant, the underside of the leaves, I'm going to spray the crown, I'm going to spray the top of the soil as well. I didn't water these plants for two days. Getting rubber gloves out, sorry. I forgot to put these on before I started. I've gone through a bunch of rubber gloves today because I, it's about the fifth time I've done a video. Telephone keeps, keeps ringing. But um, I have not watered these for a couple of days intentionally to make sure they're, they're not dry. But um, the top of the soil is nice and dry. And so when I spray the top of the soil, it's gonna absorb into the soil. The plants are gonna suck it up as well. It's gonna get into the plant cell, which that's how it works. It gets into the plant's tissue and into the cells. And when insects or anything bites it or feeds off of it later on, sticks something in the plant and sucks juices out of it, whatever, um, they're gonna get a dose of that, a metacloprid or whatever it is that's in that, the active ingredient in the bear. Um, it, re it works on the hormonal systems, ectoskeleton systems, reproductive systems, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so they will slowly die off and won't keep keep coming back. So eventually, we get rid of whatever your issue is and keep them from coming back. Um, it's worked real well on a few of them; hasn't harmed them. So I'm going to try this, and I've had really good success with this stuff outside on plants that I used, and um, I like how it works. So I'm going to try it on these and give it a shot. I'm um. I mixed up one tablespoon, one tablespoon to a gallon of really warm water, because as you spray it, it's, um, it cools down a little bit. And I've transferred a bunch of that into a spray bottle. And um, all I'm doing is I'm taking plants, and I've pretty much sprayed most of these, with the exception of one or two. But um, I'll show you how I spray a plant. Let me get this one, because this one hadn't been sprayed yet. Hang on, wait a minute. Oh, this one. All right, I'm going to saturate that plant good on top. I'm spraying it good underneath. I'm spraying that crown real good. Okay, saturating that, saturating that, saturating it. Okay, 
that complete plan. When I'm finished with all of them, and I'm going to stop and spray all of them here in a few minutes, when I finish spraying all of them, I'm going to turn my big box fan on here and let it blow on all of them and get them all dried off. Once they're dried off, they'll go back in and I'll carry out another four trays worth and get this done this evening. It only takes me about 15 minutes to spray 30, 40 violets like this. It only takes about 15 minutes. I'll listen to some music or watch a video or listen to a video or something in the background or just be quiet and just do it. But um, <clears throat> it's a little bit of work, but it's only because of the size of the collection. If you only have a half a dozen violets doing this, spraying them like this once a week for three weeks, isn't that big a deal? Let something get out of hand and then see how much you got to spray it. Then see how much problems you have. Get, some, get a good thrip infestation and see what kind of issues you have to deal with. All right? Speaking of, thrips. And that's the biggest one you're going to see. Spider mites, mealybugs, aphids, those aren't that common in, in violets. They are, but I don't see that much of them. But thrips will land on a leaf, and that's not a good, that's not a good one to show because it's um, variegated. Thrips will land on a leaf and leave a spot, leave a spot, leave a spot. They'll leave these random, you know, random spots on a plant where they gnaw and chew on it. Um, these, like I said, these are all wet. They've all been sprayed. <clears throat> they also will, as the larvae come up out of the soil, they'll chew on the, the leaf that's closest to the soil, which is the outer leaves, the older leaves. They'll chew on the bottom side of that stem right up against, right on the bottom side of it, damage it. It'll start wilting, turn gray, start wilting and die on you. <clears throat> those are two of the big, those are two um, signs of thrips. Um, thrips, you can see, one of the biggest signs of thrips is, um, sorry for my back there, sorry for the back. Um, there's no pollen on any of these, but I don't have thrips, but um, that bloom just fell off. But um, you'll get spilled pollen on the, on the blossoms. The thrips larva will chew on the pollen sacs, that's where they get their protein from, and they'll chew on it and they'll get spilled, you'll see spilled pollen on the blossoms. Um, it's not uncommon, the blossoms will... Uh, Blossoms will spill pollen, or the pollen sacs will spill pollen as they get older and mature and dry out sometimes. They'll open up and split and dump pollen on a plant, but you can tell whether or not you're getting pollen on that. You see a lot of, a lot of spilled pollen on your blossoms, you've got a thrip issue right away. Thrips are very, very common. It's not something that, you know, if you're not taking care of your plants, you're going to get. It's nothing like that. It's just one of those pests that's just always around. It. They love all plants, not just African violets. They hit all plants. Um, some plants more than others. And if you've got a collection and they're trapped inside, they're going to attract to it and they're going to reproduce and they're going to take it over. Um, best way is preventative and that's what I'm trying to do here. All right. Look for spilled pollen on the, on the petals. Um, misformed petals, blossoms with um, petals that turn brown. Um, your plant just has a poor, poor look to it, poor quality. It's not, not acting, it doesn't look well. Um, they suck a lot of juice out of a plant. Um, you can see them crawling around. Get your magnifying glass. I told everybody in a very, very early video when I first started doing videos to get a magnifying glass. One of the best growers I had the privilege of ever growing with, he always had a magnifying glass and he would walk through a bed that was deemed perfect and everything was pest free, everything was healthy and he would come through do an inspection and boom, bug after bug after bug after bug. He could identify stuff very quickly and very easily and would show people with his glass, here, look what you missed, look what you missed. And it was real easy to figure out, all right, I need to get a glass to keep up with this guy. And um, he told me one time, looking through a glass is the, best, is the best way to learn. You learn a lot looking through a glass. So pass that advice on. Anyway, I've got a bunch of plants to spray. Um, get a glass. Take a look at your plants. If you're having those spots, if you're having leaves dying off, if you're, they're not blooming well, if they act like they're having some issues and you just can't figure it out, um, Look, you take a magnifying glass and you put it on a bloom and you blow on that bloom or tap that bloom with your finger, disrupt, you know, touch the pollen sacs or something. If there's thrips on there, you'll see them run out. They're little oval, pointed at the each end, teeny tiny little things, but, and they crawl. They're not round like a mite. They're long oval, and they crawl around. Um, you may not see them at first. Go back and keep looking, keep looking, keep looking. There's usually a reason. You can find them, but if you're having signs of them, the odds are they're there. Because they're very, very, very common. Anytime you blink, bring a plant home, isolate it. Spray it, isolate it, keep it isolated for several weeks and spray it several times until it gets through two or three treatments so you know that plant is, is bug-free, pest-free before you introduce it to your collection. And also, repot as soon as you can repot. I'm not saying repot as soon as you get home, but 
repot as soon as you can to get rid of that soil. That soil could contain larvae or eggs of other insects or other pests or other fungi or bacteria that you don't want in your collection. Get rid of it, put your own stuff in there so you know what you're starting with, okay? Just protect your stuff. Don't let it get started and then treat it. Treat before. Use systemics. Put it on your calendar. We have all these electronics nowadays that can remind you, you know, a month at a time or every two months or every three months. Put something on your electronic calendar to remind you, hey, I need to get this stuff and spray. All right? Thanks for all the great questions. Thanks for all the great comments. I got to get busy. I got a bunch of plants to spray. And um, it's a tough job. I wish somebody else would do it for me, but, um, or I wish I didn't have to do it. But this is a pleasurable job because I get to look the plants over. Um, I'm not too worried about blooms. I might lose a few blooms here spraying this, but I'm not too worried. They're all resting right now, and I have pulled some blooms off to make it easier. If you remove the blooms, you're removing the pollen, your pollen sacs, and you're removing the protein, which is one of their biggest food sources. So you're putting a big dent in the population if you have anything at that point. All right. I'm not too concerned about it because of the systemic effect. Anything that survives on a, on a stem, and that's something else. If you do research on systemic products, some of those will tell you that they don't work well on blossom stems. They are, the molecules are too big to be sucked up through a blossom stem. I'm not sure if that's 100% true because um, we've used systemics and other, other plants for years and years that had very tiny blossom stems and never had those issues. But uh, even if that's the case, anything that survives on a blossom stem is still going to only plants around it or any source of food source around it is protected. So I would think that would help eradicate it regardless. So I'm not as concerned about that. I'm going to spray once a week for three weeks with this stuff. It's a little bit of a job, not too bad. It takes an hour or two for me. It's more the issue of carrying this stuff out here than it is to actually spray it. It doesn't get all over the shop. Um, it doesn't have a smell to it. It doesn't hurt anything. It doesn't seem to. Um, I'm spraying, and afterwards I'll wipe everything down, clean it up, and the floor in here gets cleaned on a regular basis anyway. So have a wonderful evening. Thanks for watching. Get out to protect your babies.